Well, it's good to be with you again, Rocky Peak, and welcome to day three of the Life Group study. And the whole study has been focused on the fact that the story of the Bible really is the story of God's presence, how we as a people were created to be in the presence of God, how we lost it due to our own sin and rebellion, and how God has been pursuing us to restore that presence in us. And these last two days have focused on key ways that God has moved progressively closer to restoring that presence in us. In day one, we saw that through the nation of Israel and in the calling to build a tabernacle and a temple. In day two, we saw that God moved closer through the person of Jesus and Jesus becoming the true temple or the true tabernacle. And here in day three, we get to celebrate that God wants to move closer still. When we think about what we call the gospel, the death and resurrection of Jesus, it forgives us of our sins and it leads us to significant transformation. And one of the key marks of that transformation or that new life, as the Bible calls it, is that we are now the temple of God, meaning that Jesus leads us to now be the place where God's presence, God's Holy Spirit now lives and dwells. And so I want to share with you how the Apostle Paul puts it as he writes to the church at Corinth. And so I'm going to be reading out of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, Paul says, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? Now think about that question. He's trying to wake sleepy Christ followers up by saying, Don't you know? that you are now the place where God's presence dwells. In fact, if we go ahead a few chapters to chapter six, Paul repeats the same question. In context, he's talking about sexual immorality and the importance of staying pure. And in that, in verse 19 of chapter six, he says, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, you were bought at a price. Again, that's the God the death and resurrection. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. And so Christ followers, let me ask you that same question. Do you not realize that you are the temple of God? And I don't ask that in an accusatory sense. I ask that out of beauty and joy. Would you pause and reflect? You are the temple of God. And knowing that we are the place where God now dwells, that brings a very real hope into this day and age, into our present. And that truth is good enough where we could stop right there, but the Bible continues. Not only does the Bible teach that by being the temple of God, we have a present hope, but it teaches that God wants to move closer still. There is more and it provides a future hope for us. See, we wait in anticipation of the return of King Jesus. And when King Jesus returns, he is going to fully restore God's presence in our life by creating a new heaven and a new earth in which we live together face to face with God the Father. And in fact, in the final book of the Bible in Revelation chapter 21, it says this. Revelation 21 verse 3, it says, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. And so ultimately, what does all of this teach us? Is that God's vision for each of our lives is one of presence. But if I were to put it another way, God's vision for each of our lives is one of intimate relationship. God has and continues to pursue us. And our opportunity is now to pursue him in return. And that's what learning to hear God is all about. You know, one of the big takeaways from this last weekend's message was that we, God tends to speak to the people who are pursuing him, who are preparing themselves to listen and follow to what he has to say. In other words, God tends to speak mainly to the people that make pursuing him their top priority. And so as we wrap up the study and your reading today in the Hearing God book, it's going to be focused on that idea of pursuing God so that we can hear him. And so as you do the reading, as you reflect on these life group study questions, I hope that it's a time of pursuit, 
I hope that it's a time of enjoyment as you celebrate who God has made you to be, and I hope that it prepares us well for what God is going to do in encounter. And so we'll see you then.